You're listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nax. Welcome to Convenience Matters, and today we're going to put Amazon Go into context. How does it affect your business? My name's Jeff Leonard with Nax. And I'm Carolyn Schneer with Nax. We're going to talk to Kevin Coop with MorningNewsBeat.com, who was with us not too long ago in uh, 2017. And we're going to talk about Amazon Go. We're going to talk about Jet, Walmart, Easy Pass, Alexa, and exactly what it means to the convenience industry. So welcome, Kevin Coop with Morning Newsbeat. My, my pleasure. Glad to be here. So, Kevin, let's just talk about Amazon Go and the impact that Amazon Go and Amazon is having on retail. Just to put Amazon Go into some context, uh, you're, I mean, you're right. They, have, they first announced it actually in late 2016 and said it would open the first quarter of 17. Uh, it didn't. Um, and, um, when I was in Seattle in late, um, 2017, right the week before Christmas, it was still not open, even though there'd been a bunch of news stories, um, about the fact that it was just about ready. And those stories came out around Thanksgiving. Um, I don't think that was fake news. I think it was just a matter of, you know, it's a very hard thing to do what they're trying to do to Amazon go in terms of creating a checkout free shopping experience. And, and the problem that they have is volume. I mean, when they come right down to the, right come right down to it, um, and that's a nice problem to have. Too many people get in the store, and um, it's a hard it's hard to, for all the cameras that are there and all the various uh, algorithms that they have to work. I keep joking that what they should do is they should only let ten people in at a time in and at a time, and they'd have people you know lining up to get into Amazon Go. Um, but I guess they don't want to take my advice on that one. Um, so, it, you know, I think Amazon Go is going to open. What we don't know about it is to what extent are they going to extend that, that kind of technology? Could you see a small Amazon Go store attached to 400 or so Whole Foods stores around the country, uh, essentially creating a convenience format um, that, that is attached to a Whole Foods store? I don't know why not. Um, there are probably reasons to do it and not to do it, but it's certainly a possibility. And they might take a hundred stores to do it or whatever. It's also entirely possible. They could license that technology, um, that they don't want to necessarily be that committed to the brick and mortar business. Um, so I, I, you know, there's a lot of still unanswered questions that have Amazon, Amazon go is going to play out when it comes to convenience in general, the impact you're seeing Amazon have, have, have in, in the marketplace, and this cuts across categories, is the, just the fact that Amazon is clearly right now focused on the last mile issue. And the last mile is, you know, the, the mile right up into until it gets into the consumer's hands. And, you know, so which is one of the reasons they're, they're you know, they're putting up more and more um, distribution centers around the country. It's one of the reasons they are investing so much more money in, in Amazon Prime and, and two-day delivery. And, and remember, they lose money on every Amazon Prime shipment that gives you guaranteed uh, two-day delivery. Um, but they're doing it because they're trying to draw you into their ecosystem. But they're putting so much focus on the last mile. And that's, that's a convenience play in a lot of ways because they understand that, you know, if, if I need it in the next two hours, that's a sale they're going to lose. Well, they don't want to lose any sales. So they're trying to figure out how to, how to conquer that problem in as many markets as possible. When I think, Kevin, um, for me, I, I, I you know, I'm, I, I do a lot of my shopping online. I, this is the first year I've done probably most of my shopping, and a lot of listeners are probably going to hate me for this, on Amazon. And I probably at least half of my Christmas shopping last year was on Amazon um, and relying on that that delivery right when I need it. it is, now I'm, I find myself ordering on my phone when I'm literally standing in a, in a retail store, not one of ours, but standing in a retail store ordering um, basic household goods that I might need, like, oh, this is cheaper here. I'm doing that. So everything that you talked about in the last podcast, I was like, I'm never going to do that. And now here I am doing that. So they have become kind of my convenient item um, and convenience place in terms of um, going to. But I still think that Amazon Go especially, or Amazon itself, not so much Amazon Go, um, it doesn't have the the... That I need it right now. I'm just hungry. Oh, there it is. I want to go get something to eat or I want to go get something to drink. But now we have Amazon Go. And if those are popping up, that definitely is 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 something our listeners and our retailers should be paying attention to. So in that regard, do you see Amazon Go, especially competition? Is it way of the future? Is it just something new and flashy that might not be here in a couple of years? Or should our retailers be paying attention to the fact that 
this is the way you have to go if you're going to stay relevant? Well, listen, I think it's important to keep in mind. I mean, Amazon's not the only one working on, on a checkout free shopping experience. I happen to just spend some time at the Microsoft Retail Innovation Center in uh, Redmond, Washington. And they're working on the same technologies. And, and so, um, and, there's, there's, and, and there's certainly are going to be other companies out there that are doing it as well. So Amazon's not the only, Amazon's not the only one doing it, um, which in some ways should make it scarier <laughs> to traditional retailers um, because somebody's gonna, somebody else is going to do it. You know, could Walmart do it? Could Target do it? Could, um, could 7-Eleven do it? I mean, you never know, right? Somebody's going to suddenly pop up one of these things in some market as a test and is going to, and it could happen before Amazon Go, it could happen afterwards, and they're going to get everybody's attention. You know, the, the thing about the marketplace now that I think is so interesting is it's the stuff you don't see coming that's always the thing that just smacks you upside the head and you, get, you go, oh, okay, that just changed my world. I mean, as like when Amazon bought Whole Foods. You know, there weren't a lot of predictions about that. You know, that a lot of people thought Amazon might get into the, into the brick and mortar business, but buying Whole Foods, that wasn't really on a lot of people's radar. So when they did it, 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 it got everybody's attention and everybody said, okay, well, that changed only everything. And so um, th- that's the thing to keep in mind. So it's, it's the use of technology in stores and checkout free shopping is just one part of that. That is, is the stuff that people ought to be concerned about and thinking about. The, how do they invest in it? I mean, but there's so many different, you know, there's so many, come on Microsoft. I blew my mind because the kinds of things they're working on and it largely has to do with customer recognition and being able to be more targeted in terms of knowing who your customer is, how they walk around the store, where are they stopping? What are they paying attention to? And then how do we integrate that information with how they behave online? because we have all that data and then how do we market more aggressively and ambitiously and effectively to those people to create a relevant and resonant shopping experience. And, and it's, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was was just going to say, so I I think also it's, it's when you solve somebody's problem and they didn't really expect this coming, a perfect example is easy pass. Living on the East Coast, driving from D.C. to New York, and it used to be half hour wait for a toll here, half hour wait for oh, a toll here. Feel your pain. Worst. Feel your pain, man. <laughs> and and it and you're totally. paying actually more now, but you love Easy Pass because you just go through that toll at 35, 45, 55 miles an hour. You know, one of our listeners is probably driving up and down the Northeast right now, going, "I'm in a toll lane." Oh. Ah. Yeah, but the the lines are gone. You're probably spending more money. But you embrace that they gave you that time back, and that's, I guess, the bigger lesson when you think about Microsoft, Amazon, and all these others. They're they're thinking through your uh, your eyes as opposed to we just need to eliminate uh, employees. This is about making the customer's experience well, better. It's much more frictionless, and that's a great example because now, if you if you in in New York, if you drive over the Whitestone Bridge, which is a a, a Horrible has always been a really horrible experience. Uh, although well, that's, that's because you're going going to LaGuardia Airport. That's because you're going right? to a Mets game, and I'm long time but, Mets yeah, fan. Well, Jeez, don't, go pick, Yankees. don't pick on the Mets. It's you know it takes character to be a Mets fan. Don't ever forget <laughs> that. Uh, almost as much character as it takes to be a Jets fan. I have a lot of pain in my life. Anyway, but it's interesting because in, recently, it's not just Easy Pass. They've taken down the tolls completely. So they've basically given you a choice. They said you can get Easy Pass. And we're going to charge you. And in fact, we're going to charge you a little bit less money if you use the Easy Pass, or we're just going to take a picture of your license plate and send you a bill. Now, I've never seen any statistics on how many people get that bill and don't pay any attention to it. Um, but clearly, the, the whole idea, I mean, talk about being um, disrupted out of business. If you're a toll taker in America, you're screwed <laughs> because <laughs> they, you're just not going to, nobody's going to need that person anymore. And so, um, so in fact, Technology, technology like EasyPass also enables other technology um, that to, to kind of evolve and then takes you to the next step. 
What if, and um, that's what's always interesting about this stuff. What if Easy Pass joined up Trump with convenience server. stores and like you just like wave a sign out your window as you're driving, you know, 50 miles an hour under it, and your your convenience item is waiting for you at the next rest stop? Let's patent that. Uh, totally cool. <laughs> well, what if Easy Pass? One of the. I, I mean, listen. What if? I mean, it was interesting. I was thinking about this the other day because I was talking to somebody who's in a uh, in a research and development mode at a at a company that will not be named at the moment. But they're actually thinking about the idea of developing what essentially is a food truck that's a convenience store. So what if instead of, of, of XYZ company having, let's say, 100 convenience stores anchored in specific locations, sometimes on highways, sometimes in urban markets, sometimes in the suburbs, whatever, they also developed a fleet of a dozen or two um, convenience store trucks that could go to other locations. They could, uh, in the Northeast, for like where I live in Connecticut, right? They could uh, they could park that that sucker at the train station. So when people get you know people get off the train at night uh, after work to, after working in New York City, there's a convenience store right there. So they could pick up other things. Now they might have to raise their game in terms of um in terms of what they offer in terms of let's say you know fresh food prepared food things like that but it'd be a great way of capturing a segment of the market they're probably not capturing at this point and that really to me is the is the point here is that it seems to me that where we're headed and we can talk about a lot of different categories but whether whether you're talking about supermarkets or you're talking about convenience stores or you're talking about drug stores or you're talking about dollar stores whatever you're talking about it seems to me that the overarching sort of um, plot line at this moment is each of these categories realizing they cannot live within traditional boundaries and they have to, they have to raise their game. They have to try and encroach on other players because those players are going to try and encroach on them. So they need to figure out, okay, how do I use merchandising smarts, marketing smarts, and um, um, uh, technological innovation and customer service, let's say. And how do I employ all those things as a way of, of enlarging my market, enlarging what Amazon would call its ecosystem? Um, and I think that's incred- critically important. And it really becomes important because Amazon wants all of it. And, and, and Walmart is, trying to, is spending a gazillion dollars trying to figure out how do they, how do they just stop Amazon? So you've got this, um, um, you've got this enormous momentum, and I think the only way to compete with that is to a raise your game at every possible level, and b figure out what other pieces of the market that maybe you have not traditionally gone after, and how, how do I go after that? How do I enlarge my sphere of influence a little bit? Walmart has Jet, right? Is that the name of the? Uh, the... Yes. So they bought Jet. Do you think that would ever become like a Amazon Go ish type of situation where they would have? Could 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 Jet open stores? You know, I I've decided I'm getting out of the never business. <laughs> um, it you know, I just doesn't because it, it doesn't because <laughs> it doesn't really pay very well, and it's almost always wrong. Um, sure, could Walmart open Jet stores? Could Walmart open, would it make sense, for example, you know, for Walmart to create a, um, a, a sort of a jet mini chain in the park, in the park, in its parking lots all over America? Maybe. Um, I, I suspect it probably makes more sense long term. I think it probably makes more sense long term for jet to sort of fade away and for Walmart.com to be the brand. I don't know why they would. I'm not sure why it would make sense to have the two running concurrently. Right. Um, but they may have all sorts of research that says, "Oh no, it really makes sense to have this other name," in part because um, there are people out there who just say, "I'm never shopping at Walmart." Well, and they haven't quite figured. In my opinion, they haven't quite figured out the uh, the online ordering, getting it to your house on time, getting it to wherever it needs to go, and even like the in store pickup. I always have trouble with that, and maybe it's just my local store. Who knows? Well, that's changing. You know, Good. they're they're developing. Don't forget, they're creating their own version of the Amazon lockers, and so um, they're so they're gonna they're trying to they're they're addressing that. 
they're addressing that. You know, it's generally easier. My friend Tom Furphy, um, who used to work at Amazon and now is a uh, a, a, a venture um, capital uh, capital guy who um, invests and nurtures small internet companies. Um, and it's like the brightest guy I know. I love hanging out with him because it makes me feel smarter. <laughs> um, but Tom, Tom always says that it's, it's, it's so much easier for a, um, an e-commerce company to, 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 to branch out into brick and mortar, which is essentially what Amazon is doing, than it is for a brick and mortar company to branch out into e-commerce. The reason for that being that is if you're in the brick and mortar business, you've got all these legacy issues. And as you branch out into e-commerce, inevitably there'll, there become cultural, cultural disconnects, reasons you can't do things. Uh, if you're in the e-commerce business, you probably don't have, and especially this is the case with Amazon, which does not believe in the word legacy. Um, they don't have that. So it's much easier for them to sort of expand into different areas because they're not dealing with the same kind of cultural disconnects. Yeah, and you uh, mentioning uh, earlier um, Amazon acquiring Whole Foods, and Whole Foods is right next to our office. Now there's Amazon boxes there, the the delivery uh, boxes. Sure, the lockers. Yes, Mm -hmm. the Amazon lockers, I'm sorry. And then you see they have Echo for sale. You see that it's starting to become there. Now, when we talk about convenience and the impact of the internet, I know over the holiday season there was an awful lot of stuff bought, and people got it in a day or two days or whenever they needed it. But it, there was a day attached to it as opposed to minutes. So I think a lot of times in the convenience industry you think about, well, the internet won't really compete with us because I'm hungry now, I'm thirsty now, I need a fill-up. It's going to be difficult to do that instantly with the internet. And that is all true, and that's something I I believe. But I think when we're looking at disruptions, what we're looking at really is not the direct disruption that Amazon may have, but the indirect one. How do they impact the grocery industry? So the grocery industry has to react, and that reaction affects convenience stores or or QSRs. Can I stop here for a second? Can I stop for a second? Because Carolyn just talked about how they could disrupt it. I mean, keep in mind, okay, so Carolyn talked about about – ordering something from, from the car, and then having it available at the next rest stop. Well, keep in mind, BMW and Ford and Nissan, they're all working with Amazon to, um, to and I think Cadillac is doing this as well, GM, to, to install Alexa-based ordering systems in, in cars. Well, Sheets so is in that, that game now, too. To- Sheets you can order from Alexa. Oh, you can order for um, Sheets stuff um, on Alexa too. So I guess you could do that in your car if well, you have an Alexa in your car. Keep in mind, yeah, right. Well, that's and that's the point, and that's and that's the thing to always remember about all those voice activating uh, activation systems, all these smart speakers, is they do wonderful things. I always I always joke that I you know um, we have an Alexa. I think we have Alexa in every room of our house <laughs> at home, and so the first thing I do in the morning, inevitably, is. Uh, is I is I say Alexa, what's the weather outside? First thing I do, and Alexa always tells me. Now, um, as we're talking, I'm actually in a hotel room. When I woke up this morning, the first thing I said is Alexa, what's the weather outside? <laughs> Forgetting that Alexa's not here, right? And so it's it's become part of it's it's part of what I do every day. So you can you know you can find out the weather, you can find out the time, you can play music, you can do ask it all sorts of questions, you can get news reports. There's lots of things you can do. But it's there to be an e-commerce um, ordering system. That's at, at its base what it is. Um, you know, Alexa exists so that, yes, I can ask what time it is. I can ask what weather it is. And I can ask her to tell me the news. But I can also say, Alexa, I'm out of Diet Coke. I'm out of paper towels. I'm out of one Tide or I'm whatever. And and she will place that order for me, and she'll pl- replenish it. I had to turn okay? that off in my house. So, my son Nate kept ordering random things from uh, Alexa, and thankfully I was able to stop them. But yeah, you, it, yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, <laughs> Kevin, the producer has just been sent a case of Diet Coke because of what you just said. It just blipped, and it just shot stuff there. So um, enjoy the Coke, uh, Kevin Coop. Uh, write go, down Blake. that on the invoice. <laughs> Hey, by the way, I, and the, but think about that also. And I just it just occurred to me. So you just you just you know you, you're making a joke, I think. And um, but think about it this way. So if so how many times do people pl- make uh, make a quick run to the convenience store to buy something they want right now? 
because they forgot to get it sometime other time. Guilty. I would bet some percentage of that, right? So let's pick a number. Let's just for fun. Let's say 20% of the time when people go to the convenience store, it's to buy something they meant to buy another someplace else or another place. And, um, and they didn't. So they run down the convenience store to pick it up. Right? So let's, let's say the number is 20%. Let's say the number is 10%. But if suddenly I've got automatic replenishment through Amazon, right? I've got subscribe and save, or I've got the dash buttons, or I've got Alexa. So I'm able, able to much more easily replenish my supplies. Um, it's not a question of making sure I write it down on a list so when I go to the store, I actually get it. It's much easier and much more intuitive and, 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 and is much more reactive to what I need at this moment. Do the number of times that I run out of stuff and therefore have to go to the convenience store, does that, does that number come down? And let's suppose, let's suppose it, you know, it goes from 20% of the time to 10% of the time. So 10% of the visits to XYZ, uh, the convenience store, um, go away because people don't, don't, they don't have the need anymore. They, they've got it. It got replenished. What is, is that a 10% of, of business that the convenience store industry can afford to lose? I'm guessing no. Right. Because 10 percent is a big number. Now, I don't know if the number is 10 percent or 5 percent. I don't know what the number is. But my point, my my larger point is that consumer habits are changing and they're being reshaped by technology. And probably in some ways, that's some of that's not good. But whether it's good or not is 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 irrelevant. It's happening. And if consumer habits change, it may be that. um it is going to have an impact even on the convenience sector, which may be largely sitting around saying, oh, I can't be disrupted. And to use Carolyn's example from before, okay, I'm in my, I'm in my, on my Ford, I'm motoring down the road. You know, it's something I feel like a, a Diet Coke in a package of Twizzlers. I'm a Twizzler addict. <laughs> and uh, so I say, Alexa, order me, uh, I, need, I need one of Diet Coke and a, and a package of Twizzlers. Where's the next convenience store I can get it? Um, and she tells me it's six miles down the road on the right. Great. I go down and I do it now, you know, and I, and there it is. It may be waiting for me and maybe I've already paid for it. What if she just, because it's all built into the system. What if she already ties into your GPS and, know, and just all of a sudden reprograms where your, your, <laughs> your ways or your Google maps or yeah. whatever is telling you where to go. Sure. All of a sudden you're I like, mean, how'd I get here? Oh, oh I guess I'm buying food. Yeah. <laughs> In my car did Which that. One of the reasons, yeah. And what and one of the and what a lot of this means is that is that um, convenience stores are going to have to start figuring out okay how do we start to engage with this technology and embrace it and kind of build it into our plans because if there's if convenience store A has an Alexa um, uh, connectivity and convenience store B doesn't eh, convenience A is, is convenience store A they're going to have a little bit of a competitive advantage. So, Kevin, as and all, so th this is all really hard to figure out, right? But it's it's and in some ways it's like drinking from a fire hose because there's so much of this stuff out there, and um, and yet retailers are going to have to start figuring out, all right, how do we start to adapt to this new world? And Amazon, Amazon is showing us the way. Amazon is kind of putting the throwing the spotlight on where the opportunities are, where the challenges are, but it's not just Amazon, and that's important to remember. And I think that the big thing, and, and thank you again for, for joining us today, the big thing is that Amazon Go is in Seattle, or soon be open in Seattle, but you don't have to be in Seattle to, to face the competition. And, and Kevin, your morning news beat has some great ideas on how retailers can compete. In December, there was a great article you did on, on the store called Story. So check that out. It's all about experience. Morning news beat. Dot com podcasts. Thank you very much, Kevin. And thank you for listening. And we're done? Yes. We're done. I could have done this for hours. <laughs> well, we'll do it we again. We will again. We're uh, in six invite months. Me invite me back. This is fun. We would love to have you back. Also, Kevin has podcasts. Let's be on one of yours. Pod podcast is on. You can get the podcast on iTunes. It's called The Innovation Conversation with Tom Furphy and Kevin Coop. And we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. So. Thanks there's again, my, Kevin. There's my there's my there's my uh, my uh, 
my shameless self-promotion. That's great. Well, thank you for calling and thank you for listening to Convenience Matters. Convenience Matters is brought to you by Nets and produced in conjunction with Human Factor Media. For more information, visit convenience.org.